Hi everyone, I'm Ellie from Code of the Future and today I'm going to be showing you how you can create your own little turtle game in Python. So this uses the package turtle in Python which if you're not already familiar with it you'll basically get a you know, good understanding of it through this tutorial and also it's just a bit of fun that you can do when coding. I think turtle is one of the really kind of nice packages in Python especially if you're if you're a beginner so yeah let's have a bit of fun today I'm going to jump straight into the video I'm going to start screen recording and I'll move you onto the screen okay so we are in PyCharm and I've created a Python file called turtle game and this is where we're going to start doing our coding so obviously the first thing we're going to say is turtle game using the package turtle perfect so as usual, you know, with, with anything, we kind of need to import the relevant modules. So we're going to say import relevant modules. And because we're using the package turtle, we obviously need to import turtle. So the way we do that is we just put import turtle. Now you can import turtle as something, but I'm just going to keep it as turtle for now. Um, and yeah, just leave it as turtle. So that's to begin with the only module we're going to need but we will add some towards the end just to incorporate some other elements into the game okay so the first thing we're going to do is just set up a really nice you know um, screen for turtle and it will show you if you are a beginner and you haven't looked at turtle before then it will show you how the screen element works if you are watching this video and struggling a little bit because you've never done turtle before there is a video on my channel that talks you through the basics of turtle um, it's not a long video at all and i will be going over most of the stuff today anyway but if you are struggling a little bit then i'd recommend checking out that video i will put the link in the description box so we're gonna do the screen so we'll just put setting up a nice screen for our game so the first thing we're going to say is screen equals turtle dot screen now this is just standard in the turtle package it's just a way of creating the variable screen to the turtle screen we don't have to sign the variable like this but we do it anyway just because it skips a couple of steps so we've got the screen equals turtle dot screen now we're going to take this screen that we have defined up here and we're going to say bg color now remember if you are from the UK or you aren't from you know America and you don't spell colour like this, it's without the U. I've fallen down many times on that just because I've put colour as, as in the English spelling. So BG colour. Now as you kind of guessed it I would assume it's the background colour. So we're going to go with light blue. Now you can change this to any colour you want. Um, the only thing is just make sure that this is a colour that is different from the colours we'll use later for the actual players. Okay so I'll, I'll put here background a light blue colour now I spell colour like that obviously because I'm British so there we go so we're going to run this now notice that nothing happens and that's because turtle will do things you know immediately so we need to just add something here saying turtle dot done now this will keep turtle on the screen once you've once you've run the command so we'll click run so now when I swipe onto my desktop, perfect, we've got this Python turtle graphics. Now, this is what happens. So the reason why it went away and we didn't see anything is because it doesn't move on to the location where, where this is. So you always have to swipe and find it on your desktop. It can depend on the laptop you're on. Sometimes it will just immediately pop up. But on Macs anyway, you tend to have to move on to your home page to find it okay cool so we have this backdrop we've got a light blue and you know notice that if i change this to let's change it to red we'll stop that running and we'll run it again and i move on to my home page bright red very bright actually <laughs> blinding me a little bit but um yeah so we've got a nice backdrop for our for our game so we'll put back to light blue perfect and um, we'll just We'll run it and show you that it's back to light blue so again if you have you know do anything in turtle this turtle dot done is, is really handy because it will keep the turtle um you know drawing on the screen so i'll just put here this keeps the turtle drawing on the screen and it's just it's something really handy um especially just because of how fast python works um it just allows you to still have it on the screen and it not disappear straight away okay cool so we've got a nice setup for our game got a nice light blue now what this game is going to involve is you're going to have two turtles I said that really yorkshire then <laughs> two turtle we're gonna have two turtles we're gonna have one round round about here and one round about here and the idea is we're going to do it so that 
Python will essentially have a, a die so you, you'll throw a die and obviously you'll have a number one to six and then say if you roll six then your your you know your turtle will move six steps forward if you roll a two then it will step two steps forward now this is just a nice way of kind of making your own little game and also showing you that python can randomly generate things so as i said we'll have one turtle here one turtle here and the idea is it will move across and we'll have kind of like a finish line here so now we have this backdrop we kind of need to put in some information about the players and you know define the players we don't have anything at the moment so that's what we're going to do now so i'm going to put we want two players in this game and the idea is that whoever gets to the other side wins perfect okay so let's do some defining for our players so I'll say player one and this is just going to be the basic setup of player one okay so we are going to make a variable player one and we're going to let that equal to turtle dot turtle now what this does is it will is it will create your own little turtle so watch what happens when I stop running the Python file from before and we click run we have a little turtle here now obviously this is this is not a turtle as it were we can make it a turtle which is what we're going to do in a minute but this is you know what python produces it automatically produces an arrow and that's just the default in python but we can make it look like a little turtle which i think is really really quite cute so we've got this player and now we're gonna make it look like a turtle and define some other things as well as you know the fact that it looks like a turtle we're gonna make it you know different colors and things so we've got player one we've defined player one i'm going to stop that python file from running okay now we are going to color of the color of player one and all we do is we say player one as seen there we say dot color again the american spelling and then we input any color we want into here so what should we have usually we have blue and red don't we with with colors um i don't know i feel like that's kind of a game thing blue and red so we'll have blue and red okay so we'll run this and notice that the colour has changed to blue which is pretty cool you can also change the size of of these um turtles as well but that's not something we're going to do today just because the default settings work really nicely in our favour so we've got the colour of the player now we're going to make this player a turtle which may sound a little bit strange but we're going to say player one dot shape and inside here we're just going to say turtle now i think this is really cool and <laughs> I think it's nice so let's run it and you'll see what happens we've got a little turtle which i yeah i just think it looks pretty cool <laughs> hopefully you'll find it cool as well and i'm not just being a little bit of a, a nerd anyway so we've got the basic setup for player one we've got the color and we have the shape now we can do the same for player two so we could copy and paste this but instead we're going to make a clone of player one so we're going to say player two basic setup and we're going to say player two equals player one dot clone so what would happen now is you know if i run this we'll, we'll stop it running if i run this basically you'll have two turtles on top of each other because they're both loca located in the same place so it, it's not really worth running this at the moment because you will just have two players on top of each other so you won't actually be able to see them both individually so we've made a, a clone of, of player two uh, of, so we've made a clone of player one and we've create, let this equal player two so now obviously we don't want this, the two players to be the same color because you know that's a little bit boring so we're going to say color of player two and we're just going to say player two dot color as usual and we're going to make it equal red i just think blue and red you know they're the they're the two usual colors anyway you can change that those colors to anything you want so if you want black and orange or blue and green <laughs> anything you want in in these two things and, and same with the the backdrop as well okay cool so we've set up the two basic you know players in this game now we're gonna get them to do some things which i think is quite cool so we've found the two main players in this game and now we're going to get them to actually start doing some things okay so we're going to first position our players and this is we're going to sorry so if i just run this again we're going to have one over here and we're going to have one over here and then they're going to go across the screen 
So let's position them in those two locations, one there and one there. Okay. So it just so happens that when I'm, you know, after a bit of playing around, we have about minus 300 and about 200 there. And then kind of for symmetry, we have minus 300 and about minus 200 here. So if I was to just say, okay, well, let's take player one and player one can play. Okay. And player one can go to, so what did I say? Minus 300 and I think it was 200. So watch what happens now when I run this. Notice there's a blue line that's been drawn. Now, if I do this really fast and I just click run and I go across, notice that it moves. So what we're asking, you know, our, our player to do is move to this location. But Turtle has it already built in for the default that as soon as you begin doing anything in Turtle, your pen will be down. And that's where the whole Turtle graphics come in. So your pen's going to be down, which means that when you move to somewhere, it's going to draw a line to the place that you move. So the way that we overcome this, obviously we don't really want this, <laughs> you know, line in the middle. Um, the way that we overcome that is we're just going to say player one, pen up. And all that does is the pen will be lifted and then it can move to that location and therefore no line will be drawn. So we'll stop running this and we'll rerun it. Perfect. Our player one moves all the way over here without a line drawn. So we can do the same for player two so we'll copy all this and the thing that we will change is obviously we now have player two not player one and obviously we don't want them both to go to the same location so for symmetry we're going to put a minus 200 in here i'll stop that running and we'll rerun it perfect cool how cool is that one moves there and one moves there we've got a little bit of symmetry now and now obviously we have this you know we'll have a finish line but why don't we draw a finish line i think yeah Let's draw a finish line. So I'll just pop here. Now let's draw a finish line. So what I'm going to do is we could create another turtle kind of cursor and draw the finish line. But just to show you how you can kind of move about the screen, I'm going to show you how you can take your player one or player two, move it to a location, draw a finish line and then move it back, which I think is quite nice. So, okay, let's draw the finish line, perfect. So we're gonna take player one um, and we're gonna get it to move to a specific location, then draw a line, and then we're also gonna just have it to, you know, put some text in there as well. So we're gonna take player one. Now we want it to move to here, draw the line. So obviously the pen is still up, which is great. It's not no longer gonna draw a line, but we want it to move to around here. Now it just so happens that around there is about 300 and minus 250 so we'll run that and show you what happens so both players get into position and then the turtle moves over here cool so the next thing we need to do is we need to turn the player so we'll say player one left 90 so what this does it will move here and then it will turn like this and that's so we can draw a straight line going upwards because if it was turned on the slant and we told it to go forward it would then obviously go off the screen and we want it up here perfect so what we need to do now is for it to draw we need to say pen down so that's the opposite of pen up it's going to put the pen down and now let's say we want it to move forward so player one now you can do this one of one of two ways you can either get it to go to a place or you can say forward which you know immediately goes straight so we'll say forward i think 500 i think it was that i originally did it as and we'll run this notice two players get in the game turns and it draws a line now that's cool but the only issue is we have a blue line now it'd be quite nice to have a, a black line wouldn't it because usually fin finish flags are black and white um white probably won't show up too well against this here so we're just gonna have a black line so here when we say pen down we're going to just change the color of player one and we're going to change the color to black and so we change the color to black and we'll rerun this and obviously the two players get in the position moves here turns and it's black now so the player is now black and obviously when we move it back we will move it back to blue for it to start doing you know the game okay cool so it's drawn up got a little tail perfect okay 
now what we wanted to do is draw a little finish you know some text up here we're going to get it to draw finish so we're going to say player one now player one is going to write finish okay so let's see what happens here under the default setting so we'll just pause it go again draw the line okay so finish is quite small you can't see it the turtle is kind of covering it that when the turtle moves obviously you'll be able to see it so we're just going to put in some parameters into here to make the finish a little bit bigger and also a different font if we want so we'll put into here finish we'll put a comma we'll put a comma in here and then we're just simply going to say font equals let's say around 24 i think 24 is what i have i have the default setting on here anyway for for when i start doing my tutorials so we're going to say font equals 24 and all that's going to do is make the font size 24 so it's going to make it bigger so we'll stop running and we'll rerun see if it does give us a nice size finish perfect okay that's pretty cool that's i'd say that's big enough you can make it bigger and also in in this kind of um here right on turtle there are definitely some more commands that you can do inside you know some more parameters you can put in here to you know change the color things like that cool so we've we've got it to write now what we want to do is get turtle to move back to its original position so we know that originally player one was assigned to here minus 300 and 200 okay so we've drawn the line i'm gonna say player one pen up that just means it won't draw a line when it eventually returns back over here we're gonna make the player one color go back to blue because we want consistency and then we're going to say player one go to now what parameter did we use minus 300 to 200 that's where we initially positioned it so we want it to go back there we'll pop that there and i've just made a mistake there perfect so we'll pause we'll stop that and we'll run both players go there we get a finish line drawn okay cool so the turtle is actually pointing upwards so we need to account for that so what we'll do is here we told the turtle to go left so to reverse that we'll make it go right again so we'll just put in here player one dot right player right and we'll put in here 90 degrees because obviously it turned left 90 degrees cool could do if your math is strong is you could take you know add on however far you need to go left to get back again which obviously I think is 360 minus 90 so you could put that in there and change that to left but we're not going to complicate it too much today so i'm going to turn right back so let's run this and hopefully both players will move draw the finish line they'll go back to the original position and turn cool we've got this little setup going you know already which is uh, i think it's pretty cool it's a really nice way to you know as i said introduce beginners to the turtle command because it's pretty nice okay so that's drawn the finish line and we've got the and we've got so let's draw the finish line and then i'll just say here um allows player one to return to its starting position again pop that in there so now we need to make sure both players have their pens down and that's simply because what we want to do is when it moves we'd quite like to have a little trail behind it just so we can see how far it's moved um, it's just a nice little feature you don't have to do this but i think it's just a nice way of you know following along with them seeing which one's moving so i'm going to say player one pen down and similarly player two pen down cool so we've got them both pens down now we need to figure out what we would do in order to get these to start moving so obviously we want it to be a relatively fair you know we want the game to be fair the idea is that we'll have a, a die you'll roll the die and then whatever number you have on that die that's how far you move forward now obviously python works in terms of pixels so you will need to move if you did you know specifically move one pixel each time it it would you know the game would go on for a long time because you'd literally be moving the tiniest amount um or say six pixels if you're rolling a six so what we'll do to factor that in is just multiply each by a given length and then that just means that a step is this long rather than you know absolutely tiny so we'll factor that in now so obviously we're gonna you know make it like a die, a die rolling game so let's create um values for the die so we'll just say die equals one two 
three, four, five, six. Cool. Now what this means is the die has, you know, some of these values. Now what we can do in Python is we can use something called the random module. And we have used that before in some of my previous videos. But the idea behind the random module is you can select a random kind of output of these six numbers here. So we'll say let's create the game. Cool. So what we're going to say is we're going to say for i in range. Now I'm going to say around 30. This value you can change if you make it too small. The number of times you're going to go over this, you know, roll this die. Um, if it's obviously too small, then no one will ever, non, neither of the players will reach the end. So you need to make sure that this number here is, is high enough so that you account for, you know, a, an appropriate number of, of die rolls and that the game isn't cut short because you've run out of die rolls. Cool. So for I in range 30, we'll, we'll just select 30. Now what we need to do, when, and we'll first consider this, is you know, what happens if one of these players gets to the other end? So we know what kind of this value is here because we've drawn the finish line. We need to consider what, what happens if these players get to the end. So in this for loop, what we will start by doing is saying, well, if either of these players get to the end, then, you know, the game is finished. And then if not, we'll move them forward. So we're going to say in this for loop, if player one, so if, if, okay, player two, if player one's position so this is position pos is greater or equal to that's what that notation there means we'll put open brackets now we moved let's have a look we moved to here to draw the finish line and then obviously we went forward 500 so we'll add 500 onto this which is 250 and that's just this location here where the turtle finished at so we want to say once that is is greater than or equal to that point there then you know the game finishes cool so we'll copy that that's gonna go into here but we're just gonna take the positive of that so we're looking up here and not down here cool so if the player is greater than that we'll say print player one wins the race cool and then to stop the for loop running what we need to say here is just put break and that's going to break this for loop and just stop the game in general. Cool. So let's do the same for the second player. So we can just copy this here. Paste it. So instead of player 1, we have player 2. Now instead of 250, which is up here, we want minus 250 because of symmetry. So we'll just pop minus 250 in there. And instead of player 1, we'll put player 2 wins the race. Cool. So we've got the basic setup now. If both of these turtles here get to the opposite end, now we need to actually start doing the moving forward. Cool. So I've got this set up. Now we're gonna we're gonna do something else. Now I just realised here this should be an elif, just because we're saying if this happens, then you know do these things. But or if, you know if it doesn't happen, then do these things. So that should be an elif in there. Now we're gonna say else. So now we're going to assign a new variable. So we're going to call it die roll. We're going to let that equal to. So we've got this die up here, which are these values, one to six. So we'll say, now this is where we're going to use the random module. So we're going to put random dot choice of die. Now notice random comes up in red because we haven't imported it. So we're going to go right to the top again and we're going to import random into here. Cool. So down here, if we go down, it's no longer red, perfect. So what this is doing here is assigning the die roll, which is going to be an integer. It will take a random choice of the numbers in die. And obviously we know this is die here. So what this is essentially doing here is it's going to take a random number from one to six. That's all it's doing, which is pretty cool. So take a random choice, you know, one to six. And obviously we want the player to move forward. So we'll say player one dot forward. And we're going to say die roll. So that's going forward how much this die roll is. So the issue with this is obviously because of the dimensions of turtle, we need to just take into you know consideration that it's going to be so tiny between one and six. So what we're going to do instead is we're just going to multiply this die roll by a number like 30. So this bit here is just accounting for the fact that if we did simply just choose, you know, take this die roll which is going to be a number from one to six 
it would obviously be a very very small move and we don't want to get you know we don't want to be there for ages waiting for the turtle to move tiny amounts each time so all we're going to do is multiply each of the steps by 30 and that just creates a bigger step each time and obviously it's fair because each number is multiplied by the same amount so cool we've set it up for player one and all we're going to do is we're going to copy this and set it up for player two so we're going to say die die roll two it's going to take a random choice of die and we're just going to say player two forward 30 multiplied by the die roll two cool we can have some stars in there i'm not sure why it copied with stars but with spaces but anyway cool so what this is doing is we're rolling a die then we're saying a random you know we're rolling a die we're getting a specific outcome of that die roll then that's how far player one moves forward and then we're doing the same for player two roll a die and that's how far forward player two moves cool so if i was to run this now let's see what happens okay both in position finish line drawn moves away okay oh pretty cool right so what we notice is if we just come up here, player two won the race. Okay, now that happened pretty fast, didn't it? It was kind of almost, you couldn't see what was going on because everything was going so fast. So what we're going to do now is incorporate the time module. And that just allows for a bit of, you know, take a breath in the game kind of thing. So up here in relevant modules, we're going to import time. If you've watched some of my other videos, then you'll be used to how time works. But if not, don't worry, I'm going to talk through it now so what we're going to do is after each player moves forward we're going to just add some time you know just to pause for a second so the way we do that is we say time dot sleep let's say two seconds so what happens is the player will move forward the number that it's kind of been given through the die roll and then this python file will just sleep for two seconds nothing will happen for two seconds and then it will go on to this second player and for the second player we'll do the same and we'll say time sleep two okay cool so we'll run again they get into position we've got a finish line drawn okay takes a bit of time there we go oh you could change it to one second one second might be a little bit faster but this way you can keep track of which who's going where and notice they move different amounts each time and that's because obviously we have numbers one to six. Oh, did red win i think red won Yep, player two wins the race. Pretty cool. Nice. So, you know, you could change this to one second if you want. I think one might be a little bit, um, you know, less kind of sat there waiting. Um, yeah. Okay, one move. One is a nice, nice time. Cool. This is quite a, quite an interesting race, this one. I wonder if player one will win this time. Hopefully there's no bias in it. <laughs> I think, yeah. Oh, yeah. Player one won. Cool. So, player one wins the race, cool. Now, obviously this turtle done here, we'll keep it on the screen. So if we just hashtag that out, what will happen is we'll run the pipe. Okay, finish line is being drawn. Okay, let's see who wins this game. Okay, might be blue again that has it. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, I think blue's got it. I think, yeah, I think blue's got it. Yeah, blue's got it. And notice, watch what happens now. It disappears. And that's because the game's finished and we told it to break so the reason it was staying open before afterwards was because we had this turtle done in when you get rid of the turtle done then obviously everything goes away and you can tell who's won the race something to bear in mind is if this you know what you'll notice is player one will move for first so what might happen is you may run it and player one might get across the, the, like the finish line and then player two moves one and you might think well why is it doing that when it should it should have won but that's simply just this bit of code here um, because obviously player one goes first then player two and then we check for these two things just because then it's a fair you know fair game i guess cool so there we go we've drawn a very you know we've created a very basic turtle game which i just yeah i just think it's pretty cool i think we've done a lot in this video it's, it's quite a long video actually um one of my more you know longer videos but i think it's just, yeah, I just think it's pretty incredible. You can do some really, really cool things with this turtle package. And I think it's just a really, really nice introduction to turtle and what you can do with turtle. There are a whole, honestly, a whole range of things you can do with turtle. Um, I've created a space invaders kind of game through turtle, which if you're interested, then let me know, you know, drop a comment down below if you're interested in that and I'll 
definitely get on and, and start doing a video on that. But there are just so much, there's just so much you can do with Turtle and that's what I really like about the package. It's just a really fun one and it's also just so nice because it's that, it's a little bit different, it takes you away from everything else that you're learning. It's so nice that you can learn it as a beginner because it's that bit of, you know, fun and people keep saying on my videos that they like them because I'm trying to make them fun. So <laughs> that's what I'm trying to do today. So cool, we've got this, you know, cool turtle game. Um, yeah, there, there are obviously definitely things you can do with this code to make it, you know, simpler, you know, change different things here and there but as i said this is more to you know towards people that are beginners or people that have python knowledge there is definitely ways of doing this and making it look a lot nicer which i can do a video on if you are interested but i thought this is just you know a nice way to have a bit of fun and introduce more people into the turtle game so into the turtle module so that is the video today the the code will be up on my github and i'll put a link in the description box but yeah, that is the video today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please like, subscribe and comment. And don't forget to check out all my social media. I am doing a whole range of posts and Instagram polls on my stories just to interact with my followers. So make sure you go follow me on Instagram and my other social media and leave a comment down below if you like the video or just want a chat with me and I'll <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll comment down below and, and I'll, I'll hold a bit of a conversation with you and just find out how, how all of you are doing because I do really appreciate everyone's support on, on all my videos it really does mean a lot to me so yeah drop a comment down below so yeah that you know as i said that is the video today um and as i said i hope you did enjoy it and if you did then i, I would really appreciate if you would like subscribe and comment and i will see you all in the next video